Let's have a look at our other special pattern, our geometric series. So once again, I'll write out every term, so a, ar, ar squared, all the way up to ar to the n minus one. It's a lovely pattern. I'm gonna write it down again, but I'm gonna mul everything, multiply everything by r. So a becomes ar, ar becomes ar squared, and so on and so on. You notice I've just shifted the terms along a bit just to highlight something. So if I was to subtract, we've got all these terms cancelling, I would just be left with the uh, first term in the top line and the last term in the bottom line. One of those would be negative depending on which way I subtract. So I went the bottom one minus the top one. Uh, so we get r minus one, lots of sum to n, is a r to the n minus a, which comes up with a, well, I hope a familiar formula, a r to the power of n minus one, r minus one. Traditionally, we only tend to use that if the ratio or the magnitude of the ratio is bigger than one. And I suppose that's just simply so we don't get a negative number on the bottom of the fraction. So if the ratio has a magnitude smaller than one, we flip it around. But all we're really doing is multiplying top and bottom by negative one. It, you know, even though we've sort of drilled into, hey, use the top one for this and the bottom one, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's still going to work if you use the bottom one for a number bigger than one and the, the top one for a number less than one. Geometric series also has a, another type of sum, a sum to infinity. Now, we can't do that with arithmetic, because if you're continually adding something, then it's just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, and it doesn't work. However, with a geometric series, even though you're continually adding something, if that ratio is such that each term is getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, eventually what you're adding is so small that it's insignificant. And if you're doing it an infinite amount of times, well, you come up with a definite answer. So sum to infinity, also called the limiting sum, it's another name for it. Let's work it out. So that ratio has to be less than one, or the magnitude of the ratio has to be less than one for it to work, because otherwise the terms are getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay, well if we actually have a look at r to the power of n then, if that r is a number less than one, as n approaches infinity, it's got to equal zero. Imagine your exponential curve. If you're saying a fraction to the power of n, which is the same as saying, say, say it was a half, say the ratio was a half. Uh, so a half to the power of n would be the same as two to the power of negative n. So if you've got your exponential with a negative power, that's the one that starts up high, comes down and goes asymptotic to the axis. So that's how we know that limit must be zero. It's getting closer and closer to zero. So if that's the case, let's have a look at our formula. As n approaches infinity, well that r to the power of n is approaching zero. Everything else there is constant, so we just get a on one minus r. So that's where the formula for the sum to infinity comes from. So it only works, of course, if the ratio is in between minus one and one. So we're going to find the first 10 terms of this geometric series, 2, 6, 18, and so on. So we just have to identify the first terms two. the ratio is 3, number of terms we've got is 10. So I will use the r to the power of n minus 1 formula, 3 to the power of 10. Now, here it just depends on how good your calculator is, and I suppose because I've been doing this for so many years and... You know, so many years ago, the calculators weren't as good as you got now. I tend to work out what's in the parentheses first and then multiply that by two. And Well, in this case, you're dividing by two as well. So we end up, however you do it, 59,048. Here's one in some notation. We know this one is a geometric series because we have an exponential equation. So you see the variable is in the power. We know that's going to be a geometric because our general term for geometric, a r to the power of n. So you see something to the power of n. You know, ah, this is going to be a geometric series. But the first term is not when n equals 1 for this one. The first term is when n equals 3. So if we sub that in, we get 6 times a half squared, which is 3 and 2. 
Uh, the number of terms is not 8. Uh, 8 minus 3 is 5, but it's inclusive. So we're going to have 6 terms, and of course the ratio is a half. So sub that into our formula. Again, depending on how good your calculator is, the way you'd approach putting this all together, I'd probably work out the half to the power of 6 before I do the 1 minus, but again, that's because I'm used to using older calculators. On the bottom, we've got 1 minus a half, which is a half. That'll cancel into the 3 on 2. But uh, So again, that's how I do it, only because... I'm used to using old calculators, so I would go 3 on 2, I'd work out inside the parentheses is 63 on 64, invert and multiply the half, and we get 189 on 64. Ah, this is what I was talking about. You get a question like this, does it have a limiting sum? It's really just a matter of working out the ratio. The ratio is 4 on 56, that is less than 1. I suppose technically I should check and make sure it is a geometric series, uh, is 2 sevenths divided by 4. Is that 4 on 56 as well? Is it? Yeah. Oh, good. Whew, thank goodness for that. So, yes, it is a geometric series. So, yep, the ratio is uh, in the right area we want, in between minus 1 and 1. Ah, the classic limiting sum question. The frog in the well. You've heard the frog in the well story? Uh, you got this frog, a really stupid frog, mind you. Uh, frog in a well. And uh, the first time he hops, he can jump up half the height of the well. Uh, but the, each time he hops, he can only, gets a bit tired, you see. So he can only jump half as much each time. So the first time he jumps half the well, then a quarter, then the eighth. And the question is, does the frog ever get out of the well? Well, let's have a look. The first term, yes, well, we're picked up nicely. Uh, first term is half, the ratio is also a half. Let's use our limiting sum formula. We get one. So as I say, very stupid frog, because imagine when they've got to that point where they're just to the edge, he's going, right, I'm going to get out of this. Damn it. Okay, next time I'll get out. Oh, jeez. Might have got that far to go. <laughs> next one. Oh. And never gets out of the well. If he only thought of just having a sleep for a little bit of time, and he'd get his, all his energy back and he'd jump out. But that's good. Okay, I'll go back to this sort of question. We looked at those right at the start of the year. Exactly. Someone just said, oh, yeah, 36 over 99. If they would ask me that question, that's exactly what I'd do. I'd say, oh, that's 36 on 99. But if they had asked the question by writing as a limiting sum or something like that, then you get upset because you think, oh, what a waste of time because I know it's just 36 on 99. But okay. So we could rewrite it as 0.36 plus 0.0036 plus 0.000036 plus 0.00000036 plus 0.00000036 plus 0.00000003. I think you get the idea. Okay. So our first term is 0.36. Our ratio is 0.01. Subbing it into our formula. 0.36 on 1 minus 0.01, which, oh, surprise, surprise, 36 on 99. Who was expecting that? Y yeah, thank you for that hand up there. Yeah, good. Um, I think that's what they call a rhetorical question. Anyway, uh, 36 on 99, which simplifies down to be 4 and 11. So just make sure how is the question worded. As I say, if they simply say right as a fraction, don't waste time. Oh, 36 on 99. Okay, ooh, J, K, and L. 